Tele Madad. I'm Natasha. I'm Hena. Navroz Mubarak, everyone. On behalf of the Far East institutions, welcome and thank you for joining us. Spring signifies a time of spiritual renewal and physical rejuvenation. Just as the winter season is not eternal, the coming of spring provides us with a spirit of gratitude for blessings and an outlook of hope and optimism toward the future. This year, we may be celebrating Navroz from our homes, but we will always be together at heart. We have curated this program especially for you, with participation not only from the Far East, but from all over the world. Without further ado, let's begin our Navroz celebrations with a Navroz message from the President of the Far East Council. This will be followed by a mesmerizing opening segment that showcases creative video submissions from our community and from their extended families and friends united in celebration worldwide. On behalf of the institutional and Jamaati leaders in the Far East, we wish you our heartiest Mubarakis on the occasion of Navroz with prayers for peace, happiness and the continued good health and safety of you and your families. Today I will not speak much about the pandemic as it has been a part of our lives for over a year. Other than to say that when you are offered the vaccine by health authorities in your country, we strongly encourage you to take it. Vaccines will help move us towards life getting back to normal. Please remember that each of us plays a critical role in achieving herd immunity. However, we must continue to stay vigilant prior to getting the vaccine and after. We need to continue wearing masks, adhering to strict physical distance guidelines, washing our hands regularly and seeing a doctor if we are feeling unwell. Once the world recovers from a once in a generation pandemic, there is a lot to be hopeful for. The global economy is slowly rebounding. Stock markets are at all time highs and oil prices have recovered. Much of this has been driven by pent up demand during lockdowns and several governments pursuing a continued easing of monetary policy. We should be careful not to get completely carried away as there are still some economic concerns. However, there is hope that once global travel resumes, likely in 2022, there will be a further boost to several economies, especially those that are reliant on business and leisure travelers. This is good news for the Far East. As the global economy rebounds, it is clear that we will be existing in a new world where the office environment may be different, educational institutions may approach learning differently, technology will play an even greater role in our lives and sustainability will be more important. Automation processes and doing business remotely will continue to increase in focus. It is very important, regardless of whether you are in business, a working professional or a student, that you are able to engage in new forms of learning and that you develop new skills in order to stay relevant for the future. Critical thinking and the ability to adapt and pivot to new industries and processes and a more dynamic way of thinking will be more important than content knowledge. So take that leap, pick up that new skill and study that new industry. It will open your mind and make you even more important to the institution that you work with. In an increasingly changing world, we must all push ourselves to become lifelong learners. Our institutions will continue to share relevant information and conduct webinars on trends that we see taking shape globally in order to support you. On behalf of the leadership, I would like to personally thank the organizing team and each volunteer for arranging this exciting Navroz program. Hope you enjoy it. I hope that all of you are able to spend this weekend rejoicing with your loved ones and that by next year, we can see each other once again and be able to travel to meet our friends and family in other parts of the world. We are also looking forward to reopening several of our centers in the Far East later this year as cases continue to decline and populations get immunized. At this time, I wanted to send our best prayers and wishes to our community in Myanmar where the situation remains challenging. 
Please know that everyone else in the Far East and globally is thinking of you and praying for stability there. Also, on behalf of our community, thank you to all the frontline workers for their tenacity throughout this period and all our volunteers who contribute in small and large ways to our community. Last, but certainly not least, I want you to say a special thank you to all the women in the community. International Women's Day has just passed and it was terrific to learn about so many inspirational, motivational and heartwarming stories of many amazing women in our community. To our grandmothers, mothers, wives, sisters, daughters and granddaughters, thank you for all that you do to lead, inspire, support and nurture us. Thank you for your unique ability to multitask so many priorities and be the best role model for us all. Once again, we pray that you and your families and all community members worldwide remain positive, happy, united, safe and healthy. Navroz Mubarak. Navroz is a celebration that we have been commemorating for over 3,000 years 
and our ways of celebration have certainly evolved over time. However, the common theme will always remain, as Navroz being a time for spiritual renewal and time to reflect on humankind's responsibility towards God's magnificent creation. In his speech on November 27, 2013, His the Al Khan mentioned, Our faith constantly reminds us to observe and be thankful for the beauty of the world and the universe around us, and our responsibility and obligation as good stewards of God's creation to leave the world in a better condition than we found it. This special day is first and foremost a celebration of new beginnings and new life, but also a symbol of Allah's infinite mercy, which gives life and nourishes growth, for which we offer a heartfelt shukrana. Reflecting on the natural changes that we see around us, at springtime serves as a reminder of our temporal, physical existence, where the only continuous and enduring aspect is our eternal relationship with Allah. For this new year, let us all resolve to be more affectionate and benevolent towards Allah's creation. This year, Far East BOI students have a new way of sharing their joy by involving you in a knowledgeable experience of Navroz through a game show. They are extremely excited to showcase their talent and through this journey, share with you some insights of Navroz. With my best wishes, and I welcome you all on a Jashne Navroz. The Game Show by Far East BUI students. Yali Madad and Ide Shoma Mubarak. Yali Madad and welcome to Jashne Navroz. Today we're celebrating Navroz that has never been done this way before. Yes. That's right. We're going to conduct an elaborate game show in which participants across the Far East will have an opportunity to showcase their knowledge and understanding of Navroz. The name of the game is called Beat the Clock. It is exactly as it sounds. In this game, every team will be asked a set of seven questions and will be allocated a maximum of 40 seconds to answer the questions. The team will have an option to skip the question if they are unsure of the answer and move on to the next one. The team with the highest score, that is the team that would have a maximum number of correct answers within a given time frame will be the winners of the first round. Are you ready? Let us get this game started. Let me take this opportunity to introduce the team. We have Team Diversity. Let's welcome Isha and Afsan to Team Diversity. Now, for the first game. Team Diversity, here is your first question. What term signifies seconds. a new day and a new beginning? Uh -huh. Question number two. Iran was the first country to celebrate Navroz. True or false? True. Very True. good. Very good. What is the name of the event that equates Navroz to Hazrat Ali T as the commander of the faithful? Skip. Question number four. Ide Shoma Mubarak is how we wish Navroz in Persian language. Yes or no? Ten. Yes. Very good. Question number five. Which country was the birthplace of Six, Navroz? Five, A. Iraq four, B. Three, Iran two, C. Not one, applicable zero. D. Nice try guys. That was very well done. Let us introduce the next team. Team Unity. Are you guys ready to beat the clock? 
Question number one. What occasion is celebrated on 21st March of every year? Never. Good job. Question number two for 10 points. Was Iran one of the first countries to have celebrated Nervuz? Yes or no? Minus 30 seconds. Yes. Excellent job! Question number three for 10 points. Which Ginan is composed by Pir Shams and recited during Nervuz? Um, minus 20 seconds. Okay, moving on to question number four for 10 points. Which of the following angels revealed the messages from Allah to the Prophet on the occasion of Gadir Ekum? A. Israel B. Gabriel C. Musa D. Isa That's correct. Good job, girls. Very well done, Team Unity. This was an, indeed a very tough set of questions and required a lot of vigor, but you did well. Congratulations! Let me introduce the next team to play Beat the Clock. Are you guys ready to play Beat the Clock? Then let's get started. Team Strength. What does the term Ide Shoma Mubarak mean? A. Rest in Peace. B. O Lord of the Worlds. C. May your festival be blessed. T minus D. 30 Happy New Year. I think it's C. Excellent. That's correct. May your festival be blessed. What is the name of the peer who composed the Ginan Navrosna Din Sohamana? Pir Shams. Minus 20 A. Seconds. B. Pir Sadardin. C. Pir Hasan Kabirdin. D. Imam Begum. Is it Pir Shams? Excellent. Which of the following is an esoteric essence of Navroz? To reflect on the transient nature of the body and to contemplate about the journey of the soul? A. B. The esoteric interpretation of Navroz has actually to do with personal reflection of the journey of the soul. And that is what Hazri Imam has encouraged in all of his uh, speeches and in the reflections. And that is basically looking at the transient journey of human beings and their longer journey, which has to do with their soul. And that is primarily why Novoros is an occasion of personal reflection. You guys have done fantastically well and a round of applause to all of you. Here are the following scores for Beat the Clock. Team diversity with 30 points. Team Unity with 30 points. And Team Strength with 20 points. Well done, guys. You've completed the first round. As you can see that the first round was intense and the teams did their best to work under pressure. But this is not over. The pressure gets even more intense as the teams now move forward to play Guess What? In this game, the teams will be presented with one single question that they will need to answer. The team will have six attempts to answer the question, and in order to assist them to answer successfully, hints and forms of clues, pictures, and riddles will be presented. As you may have guessed, the upcoming questions will be increasingly difficult and challenging. Once again, the winning team will be the team with the highest score in both the segments. Let us wish the teams best of luck as they embark on this challenge. Are you ready to play Guess What? Let's get started. Question number one. I originate from the Iranian tradition and I dress in red with my face colored and I appear in disguise. Unlike Santa who speaks, who sneaks from the chimney while everyone is sleeping, I go around the streets singing away and beating at the tambourine announcing the arrival of Navroz instead of Christmas. In return, townsmen give me gifts for bringing in the festival of Navroz. I am one lucky chap. Can you guess who I am? So here is a riddle and you have to guess letters to figure out who the person is we're talking about. 
we can compare him to Santa, but in the Persian tradition, he does quite opposite of what a Santa would do. Letter A. Very good. We have a letter A. Excellent. Is there an E? Letter O. Do we have letter O? Fantastic. We have two O's. You're getting there. Is there an H? Excellent. You've got an H. Is there a D? No, I'm afraid there's no D. Is there an S? Sorry, no S. Is there an N? No N. Is there an I? You got it. You've got the eyes. Is there an R? Absolutely there is. You're doing well, Team Unity. Keep it up. Is there a T? No, there is no P. Is there an L? Nice try. The answer is Haji Firuz. And actually this tradition still exists today. And it's Haji Firuz is the name of the person who's disguised and announces the upcoming event of Novros. So nice try team, but this was a tough one. Are you ready team strength to play guess what? Let's get started. <clears throat> Question number one. What are the three forms of sacred poetry recited during Navroz? A. Excellent, we do. Um, G. Fantastic, do we have a letter G? Well done. I. Do we have a letter I? Very good, yes we do. N. Do we have a letter N? S. Yes we do. D. Do we have a letter D? Yes, we do. Q. Fantastic job, team. We're two letters away. M. Yes, we do. L. No, unfortunately, we don't. K. No, we don't. R. Do we have a letter R? T. Do we have a letter T? No, we don't. B. Fantastic job, team. That's right. It is Ginans, Kasidas, and Markabas that are recited as a form of sacred poetry during Navroz. Very well done. Team Diversity, are you ready to play Guess What? Let's get on with it. So, question says, Name the items on the Huft scene table in the Persian language. Right? So it's a translation. So I'm going to give you a word in English and you have to guess the word in the Persian language. Okay? So the first one is berries. You see the picture of the berries. That's the hint. So what is the equivalent word in the Persian language that represents berries? A. Fantastic. U. Excellent. E. Yes. I. Very good. Have to get. You're almost there. Yes. Good job. A. Very well done, guys. That's fantastic. Look at you guys. You're on fire. Good job. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Yes. All right, so the picture is presented there. So what is the corresponding name of the item on the Hafsin table in Persian language? And the picture is right in front of you. A. Good job. We have an S. Yes, we have two E's. M. That we don't have. D. Yes, D we have. Very good, guys. D? No, that we don't have. N? Letter N. 
Look at that! You're one letter away! You're almost there! See? Mm, not quite. J? The letter J. You got it! Good job! You just saved him from getting hung. Very well done, guys! That's fantastic! Excellent, excellent work. Excellent work. Team diversity, you're on fire. That's amazing. All right. Now comes the third item. Name this item in the Persian language. The one that's on the screen. That also is part of the Huff's scene table. A. Letter A. Sorry, try S. again. Letter S. That's correct. E. Very well done, guys. Almost there. N. No, letter N is not there. R. Letter R, that's correct, that's there. V. Mm, close, not quite. K. Look at you guys, almost there. K. Letter K. Look at you, oh my gosh. Good job. Very, very well done, Team Diversity. This is really impressive. Congratulations. Everyone played fantastically well. And let me tell you, the competition was tough and fierce. The grand total for each team is Team Unity with 30 points. <laughs> team Strength with 40 points. And the grand winner of this show is Team Diversity with a grand total of 50 points! Very well done, guys! I would like to thank all the participants and the viewers who have made this show possible. In essence, everyone is a winner, and we hope you have enjoyed watching this program with us. We would like to wish you a heartiest Navroz Mubarak, and until we meet again next year, stay safe and Yali Madad! Navroz Mubarak from Singapore. Navroz Mubarak from Hong Kong. Navroz Mubarak and best wishes to you and your families. On behalf of the council and the youth across the Faris, we address a topic that has been dear to many of our hearts, climate change. The decision we make today will have a substantial impact on future generations, our natural ecosystem, and biodiversity have given us so much to be grateful for. The hard truth is that our society is consuming quicker than our planet can replenish. Many of us may have read hopeful news last year. While we were experiencing simpler lifestyle due to necessary restrictions from the pandemic, the natural environment was silently healing. Globally, we have experienced a reduction of emission between 17 to 26 percent. Economic and industry slowdown resulted in our planet cooling by 5 degrees. We have lots to learn from these simple indicators. There are possibilities that we can look forward to. AKDN and Economic Climate Change Committee are working together to identify ways to reduce and reverse emission and take responsible action towards sustainable operation. Equally, we can seek out small actions to green our footprints for sustainable futures. Being part of this action to change for the climate can only be possible with each one of us taking charge. The youth in our Jamaat have been digging deep for answers through reflections and conversations. Some have found creative ways to share this knowledge with us. It humbles me to invite you to watch this short film that explores a potential paradigm shift in our tradition and lifestyle. Yali Method, my name is Amir and I'm from Singapore. In this short video, I want to first explain what is climate change, what are the consequences of climate change, and what you can do to stop climate change. Now, climate change can be understood as a long-term change in the Earth's overall temperature with massive and permanent ramifications. This is not a natural phenomenon, but driven by intense human activity. 
Many of us know that global warming is caused by the greenhouse effect, but what is it exactly? Think of our planet like a giant greenhouse. A greenhouse is a glass-like structure to keep plants at a good temperature to grow. It is sealed off from the outside world, but traps sunlight during the day to keep it warm inside so that at night it is still nice and warm and not freezing. Our planet functions like a greenhouse. It has a similar glass case that traps gases. This is our atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere consists of gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. These are greenhouse gases because they trap incoming energy from the sun. The incoming light from the sun hits the Earth's surface. This sunlight heats the surface of the planet and the rest of the energy is reflected back into the atmosphere. This energy is trapped by greenhouse gases and makes the Earth even warmer. Some of that energy goes back into space, but as more and more gases build up, more and more energy is trapped on Earth, just like a greenhouse. A little bit of trapped energy is normal but a large amount is what causes the Earth to warm. This is global warming. So what causes the buildup of these gases? Well, it's in the little things we do every day. For instance, the electricity we use to power our homes and the petrol we use to power our cars can come from things like natural gas or the burning of fossil fuels. Don't let these terms like natural gas fool you. All these non-renewable sources of energy these harmful gases such as carbon dioxide, which as you now know, contributes to the greenhouse effect and speeds up global warming. Now we are learning that even the food we eat also plays a part in the rise of global warming and going meatless might actually help save the planet. In short, we cause, cause climate change. We consume so much and we are stretching our planet's resources in. The global population is set to rise to over 9 billion by the year 2050. We're consuming the planet's natural resources faster than the Earth can replenish them. By 2050, we'll need the equivalent of three planets' worth of resources to meet our current needs. The problem seems insurmountable, and in the face of this overwhelming reality, we can agitate for change and convince our politicians to do something, but we can also start making personal changes that can help bring down our individual carbon footprint. Our carbon footprint is the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere as a result of our activities. There are little things we are already doing that can help bring down our carbon footprint. For instance, we can take the public transport or carpool. We can turn off things like lights, fans and air conditioning when not in use. We can switch to energy saving light bulbs which last way longer. We can even implement water saving habits by like turning off the water when we are brushing our teeth or shaving. Many of you may not have realized, but we have gradually stopped using single use plastic straws. That's a great step because it is one step away from our use and throwaway culture. If we are conscious about every single piece of plastic, paper, or trash in general, if we change our habits, how much trash do you think we will save? But there is more we can do too. Which is why, today, we are launching an initiative to take two pledges. The first pledge is a commitment to reduce single-use plastic. That means carrying around bags that can be reusable. So the next time you go to the supermarket, bring along a few of these cotton bags that are just lying around. Take that small step. If you feel even more committed, you can start carrying around recyclable containers instead of getting plastic containers from the shop. When you start to realize that your convenience comes at a cost, you realize all of us play a part. Imagine if the whole Jamaat stopped using styrofoam containers and brought our own recyclable containers. Can you imagine how much single-use plastic we would cut down? This is a personal commitment, a realization that every action matters and that every small act counts. The second pledge is a commitment to recycle more. It is as simple as sorting your trash in plastic, paper, metals, and others. If you don't have recycling bins in your home, you're less likely to recycle. But most of us who live in housing estates actually do have recycled bins downstairs or nearby. It is a matter of whether in that moment, as we throw away a piece of paper, do we separate from the rest? 
You don't need fancy bins to separate the trash. You need to start googling and finding out how to recycle, when to recycle, when not to recycle. The point is for us to play our small part so the larger system can work. It is easy to throw our trash into one big heap and not worry about which landfill it will go to. But the next time you throw your trash away, ask yourself, what if I recycle this? Would it help the planet in some small way? But that does not mean we sit idly by and wait for them to start charging for plastic bags to switch to recyclable profit bags or for them to increase the cost of electricity so we will turn off the lights and air conditioning when we don't need them. The point of this video is to make us all a little conscious of the little decisions we make every day that could help in some small way. The problem before us is something no generation has ever faced. It means there are no guaranteed solutions. Every little bit helps. Every single action you do has an impact, which is why today, not on behalf of the council, but on behalf of the people who will live with the consequences of your actions, we are asking you to take two pledges. The first pledge is to reduce the use of single-use plastics. The second pledge is to start recycling and reusing more. The goal is to live in a more sustainable way. This will be difficult and different. It is not easy to change habits of food or food up. It's easier to ignore it, to not really pay attention to it, to say to ourselves, don't worry, this small act doesn't have an impact. The truth is, it does. We are all responsible for what happens on this planet. Whether we leave a better planet for generations that come after us. Many of us may not live to see the darkest days, but we have a role to play to ensure the brightest day is the day. This video is a call to action to get educated, to get informed, to start seeing where you, as an individual, can work towards a more green way to live. We don't have all the answers, all the solutions. You need to believe in your bones that this is important. At the end of the day, you do as much as you can. No one can force you to be more green or sustainable. The need needs to be there. We need to remember that we have the power to change the future. And it starts with the smallest of actions. Start talking in your own families about the little ways you can cut down your waste. About things you can do to build a brighter future. Let's take care of our planet together. We all have a part to play. Wasn't it just so motivating to see our youth taking an active role in creating an awareness within the community about climate change, a topic that has been widely emphasized globally today, including by the Aga Khan Development Network. Next, let us now go on a musical journey with our London-based Pakistani singer, Nafisa Dalwani. She is an extremely versatile artist, singing everything from Bollywood to Sufi and folk to smiley song. Her new devotional song, Mala Tera Noor has touched many hearts all around the world, within and outside the community.
May this new year be a source for happiness, good health, change and positive impact. Speaking of impact, I personally found considerable insight in the short film we saw earlier on climate change. It has really triggered some thought about how we can possibly take small steps towards a collective goal in healing our planet. The youth in our Jamaat have been digging deep for answers through reflection and conversations. And it humbles me to invite you in to watch this short film that explores a paradigm shift towards traditions and lifestyle. Did you know that food production accounts for one quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions and takes up half of the planet's habitable surface? You must be wondering what greenhouse gas emissions are. Well, greenhouse gases occur, occur naturally, but can be dangerous when produced in excess. It traps heat radiated from the sun. The more heat they trap, the warmer our planet gets, causing the enhanced greenhouse effect. The primary greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere are water vapour, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. Earth's second most abundant greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide is methane, which mainly comes from the production of cows. The gas forms in the ozone layer, which decreases air quality and leads to various issues in animals, premature human deaths and reduced crop yields. A taste for meat has had a particular impact on land. The mass of animals raised for slaughter on Earth now outweighs wildlife on a factor of 15 to 1. For example, for every person on the planet, there are now approximately three chickens. Meat and dairy specifically account for 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions, according to the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization. Why am I telling you all of this? What can you do about it? Let's take a tour. Guys, have you heard about the Earthshot Prize? No, not really. What is it? It's the most prestigious global environment prize in history. It was launched by Prince William with the Agrica Development Network as a global alliance founding partner. The Earthshot Prize aims to encourage large-scale change over the next 10 years, a critical decade for the Earth. Oh my god, wow, that sounds pretty enticing. What areas are they focusing on? The website mentioned that the prize is centered around five Earthshots, each a simple yet ambitious goal to repair the natural environment. 
protect and restore nature, clean our air, revive our oceans, build a waste-free world, and fix our climate. And what makes it interesting is that the prize can be awarded to a wide range of individuals, teams, or collaborators. Everyone whose workable solutions make a substantial contribution to achieving the Earth Shots. Wow, this is remarkable. A platform for anyone and everyone without any criteria specification. One where we'll only be the recognized one by our work. Guys, the librarian is giving us a look and I think she's going to kick us out so we better leave before we get in trouble. The conversation earlier got me thinking. Did you know that our everyday meat consumption is one of the main causes of the increase in the greenhouse effect? especially red meat. Um, Eliza, you're not making any sense. Me having mutton biryani affects the climate. Can you please explain? Sure. Cows can't digest food such as grass and tough plant material. Their stomachs are microbe rich, which help them through a process called enteric fermentation. The byproduct of this digestion is methane. The dangerous greenhouse gas is a very big contributor to climate change. In turn, is among one of the biggest human activity related contributors to methane emissions globally, even more than the methane emissions from burning fossil fuels. Over a 100 year period, methane is 28 times more powerful than carbon dioxide at warming the earth. Over 15% of the greenhouse gases are a result of agriculture. Oh my God, I can't imagine how I'm gonna give up in me instantly. That sounds really far-fetched. Um, we can start with something small, like Me Free Mondays. But how do I convince my mother to give up her favorite mutton biryani? We got this, sister, plus with the extra company of Kirin. Mission Convincing Mom begins. Oh, my dear kids are home. Uh, there's mutton biryani for dinner. Could you girls please help set the table? And Kieran, will you be joining us for dinner? Um, Mom, before that, I have an idea. What do you think of cutting out meat from our diet? Ah, uh, let me guess. You guys ate out, didn't you? So this is just an excuse to skip dinner. No, Mom, actually we'd already discussed this today. Animal manufacturing produces a lot of greenhouse gases, which warms the Earth's atmosphere and contributes significantly to global warming. Global warming is accelerating at a rate where our Earth is much more at risk now than ever. This is less of an issue for our generations, but more of an issue for the generations after us, like my children and your grandchildren. All that's fine, but why can't we eat meat? Shouldn't they just figure out a greener way to manufacture meat? I used to eat meat growing up, and you've eaten meat until now. I find it hard to understand why we should change this traditional habit. Auntie, the generations before ours had the luxury of eating meat as much as they wanted, because climate change was not a large threat like it is now. And what about our festive meals? They're generally chicken or mutton biryani with meat samosas. Should we just let that all go? Your mom makes them too. And you kids need protein. How will you get that without meat? But mom, we've also eaten dishes without no meat in them, but have plenty of nutrition. Protein can come from other sauces like beans, eggs, seeds, and many more. And for festives, we can stick to the same but vegetables. So we can have vegetable biryani, veggie samosas, and there are other dishes as well that we're used to, like alu gobi and your famous dal. I don't know. We've been having meat all this while. I'm not sure I can give it up. Plus, I'm not too sure if just not eating meat is really going to make a difference to the climate. Okay, so let me try this from another angle. Eight tons of greenhouse gases per capita is emitted through all humans' activities. Changing our diet to exclude high emission foods has the potential to reduce that by 28% by both reducing emission and reforesting lands. 
talking about land, 80% of deforestation in the Amazon forest is to make way for cattle ranching. A land consisting of seven football fields of trees are cleared every single minute to create room for more animal manufacturing. By reducing our meat consumption and getting our friends to do the same, like my mom and our family too, the animal agriculture industry will produce less in the long run because there's less demand for its reducing methane emission into the atmosphere. Mom, even friends who sense that, that we have so many issues to deal with, and the most important one is environment. So please, can we... Okay, how about this? We will have meatless Mondays. We will start tomorrow after my biryani and try this out until 11th July. And because I see how important this is, we'll try to continue even after 11th July. But let's agree to that for now. And for now, during festivities, we will still have our chicken biryani. Chicken is better than meat, isn't it? And Kiran, I'll help you convince your mom too. Yay, thank you, mom. We will pledge to not eat meat every Monday to help fight against climate change. Our family is doing it. You should join us. Navroz Mubarak from Sri Lanka. Navroz Mubarak from Thailand. Navroz Mubarak from Philippines. What a meaningful takeaway for each one of us. We hope that each of you will endeavor to do your part to bring small, small changes in your daily lives, which in turn will bring about a collective impact on the climate and on the Mother Earth. We now move on to the final set of felicitations from members of our council, ITREB and GRB who have been working hard with various initiatives for our community during this time. From all of us to all of you. With that, we have come to the end of our program. Our special thanks to everyone who contributed in one way or another to enable us to put this program together. We hope the viewers, you, have enjoyed it from the comfort of their homes as much as we have enjoyed putting it together for you. Phir naya saal aayega, saat po khushiyan laayega, kitni mushkilay aayi magar, bharosa hai fakat uski zaat par, rehmatu ki barish po barsa aayega, jo maangega tu paayega, phir naya saal aayega, saat po khushiyan laayega. Navroz Mubarak once again, stay safe, optimistic, healthy, Hopeful and most importantly, stay smiling always. And don't forget to go green for our climate. Khuda Hafiz. <laughs>